Hi, this is Tessa Keo. I'm a bit late with this recording. I had hoped to have it out a couple of weeks after Roots Tech, but it took a bit longer. My apologies, and let's get right to it. As I mentioned during our Roots Tech Computer Lab sessions, I started using Microsoft Excel as a result of a research trip I made to Newfoundland. I needed to transcribe lots of data in a limited amount of time. In my case, researchers were not allowed to photocopy, scan, or photograph the records, and I found that using Excel was a brilliant way to gather all that data on site and then format it and manipulate it as needed on my return. Since that original trip, I saw how useful a spreadsheet program was, especially with specialized studies, and I made a point to learn how to use Excel from reading books, articles and online posts, watching tutorials, and simply playing around in the software. During the computer lab, I shared some of the tips that I've learned, and hopefully I convinced you to use Excel, or use it more often, for your own genealogy. Now I mentioned this in my syllabus, and you can still download it from the Roots Tech website, but it bears repeating. Every day when we do our genealogy, we make choices about what software, products and services to use to help us accomplish our goals. The most important consideration, in my opinion, is to think about what you want to do and then choose the best tool for the job, hence the Swiss Army knife. You should certainly be using genealogy management software, and I suggest that you keep it on your computer so that you maintain control over your information. Today, all of the major software is excellent, so choose the software that meets your needs and is intuitive. Another reason we want to use genealogy management software is that the best ones provide us with the option to export our data into several formats, including GEDCOM, PDF, Rich Text, and CSV. CSV simply means comma separated value, and that format is shorthand for spreadsheet. So why would we want to take our data out of our genealogy management software and put it in a spreadsheet? In this example, I performed a search in Legacy Family Tree, my software of choice, and it returned 674 individuals. In the Report and Print feature, I can select to print in the format set by Legacy, which to a certain extent I can customize within certain parameters. My report has all the detail I want, but once printed, I'm not easily able to manipulate it. However, by exporting the detail to a CSV file, I have all that data in a spreadsheet that I can manipulate to suit my needs. I can include additional information from other resources, add space for notes or anything else I want to add, including images, links to documents, and websites, and I can share all or any part of that information with other researchers. Exporting to a CSV simply gives me more control and added features to do more with my data. What types of things can we use Excel workbooks for? This word cloud here gives you several ideas, including abstracting or transcribing information from record sets, downloading data from websites or other programs, keeping a research log, keeping an education, research websites, contacts, or expenses log, and working with large data sets for specialized projects. Perhaps you have a one name or a one place study, a cemetery study, or a membership list. Perhaps you're working on an indexing project for a genealogy or historical society. Once you get comfortable working with Excel, you'll find that it's a great container for your genealogy information. Its strength lies in the ability to enter any amount of data and then sort or filter it, search it, visualize it, and organize it to help us analyze and share our data. Now, my syllabus provided links to tutorials, books, social media sites, and online courses where you can learn more about working with Excel. These are two of my favorite 24-7 sites, and I call them that because you can access them 24-7. You can read posts, ask questions, provide answers, and watch videos. Both are simply a click away on your computer. The first is Excelling Genealogist Group on Facebook, and the second is the over 1,400 video results you get when you search Excel and Genealogy on YouTube.
So why don't you go ahead and open Excel to the Start view. Excel will show your recent workbooks, and that's on that left-hand side. Excel gives you the option to open a blank workbook or choose a template. You can also take a tour of Excel, and this is a great starting point for those who are brand new to the software. Take advantage of tours and tutorials built into the Microsoft Office products. Now let's click on the blank workbook, and by click I mean left-click with your mouse. With our blank workbook open, we see four major parts. And in the example here, I'm using Excel 2016, but Excel 2013 is similar. The first, with the letter A beside it, is the ribbon and tabs. And this is where the features that you want to use are located, and you simply can work through the tabs. The tabs group a series of features together, and for the most part, you'll be working in the Home tab. The letter B indicates the cell identifier formula bar. And this is where you can see where you are in a worksheet and where you can enter data. The item listed with C is the columns and the rows section. And these various cells are where all your data is going to be located. Think of each cell as a container for a specific piece of information. That information can be in a variety of formats. And finally, the section indicated with D, the navigation bar. You can add or delete worksheets, you can zoom by percentage to view a portion of a worksheet, and you can view the worksheet in a few different ways. Now keep in mind that arrows right and left will take you to the right or left of your worksheet. Arrows up and down will move you up and down through your worksheet. Triangles will open additional information or choices for a feature, and the plus or minus signs will increase or decrease your view. Now, this brings up another point. Are you a keyboard person? You use keystrokes to access features. Or a mouse person? Do you right or left click or scroll through to access features? And finally, we have a third version, the touch screen person. Are you using your fingers? and a touch screen to access features. Now there's no right or wrong way, it's simply a matter of doing what is most comfortable and efficient for you. However, I would suggest that if you plan to use Excel or any software that involves significant data entry and manipulation, take the time to increase your keyboard skills, speed, and accuracy because you'll be using both typing and 10 key entry. Now in the next video, I'm going to switch over to my Excel example workbook and we'll go through the first three of my 15 tips for setting up and working with an Excel workbook. And I mentioned that in our computer lab. These are going to be shorter videos so you can work through a few tips at a time. And my Excel example workbook will be available to those who attended either of the computer lab sessions. And I'll see you back here for the first three of my 15 tips.